Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to do a, a reel I found at a garage sale recently. It's a uh, Abu Garcia Black Max 3600C. Uh, I've actually found a pair of them. One's in a little bit better condition than the other, but uh, both kind of look the same. This one just got a little bit cleaner, so we're going to work on this one first. Uh, both came with line on the uh, spool. I happened to take the line off on that before uh, before we started the video only from a sense of it provides better clarity in terms of what's getting done there and uh, I, my recommendation with these is regardless of when you buy it or what the person told you when you when you were purchasing it about the line take it off it's not worth taking a chance with it and it's not not worth uh, missing fish over so this one's a low profile it's the ambassador series it's an aluminum frame three ball bearing low profile uh, lesser capacity than what you're used to seeing in uh, some of the bigger ones that are out there. Here's the um, the 6000 for example. You can see that the profile is, is smaller, the capacity less. But these are great in rivers and bays, inshore ocean, and uh, up on the Atlantic seaboard here we use them uh, quite a bit uh, for summer flounder or fluke. And also a lot of fun with small bluefish and other game fish. So I'm going to take this apart. I'll show you how this reel is made. We'll do some basic service on this reel. And uh, as I mentioned, whenever I pick these reels up, I want to make sure that they're complete, that they're not missing any parts, that there's no apparent breakage. If there is, then you want to negotiate downward for uh, the pricing on that because you'll know that you have to replace the parts. So uh, this one's running pretty smooth. I just hear a little bit of a burning wine, so we'll put some oil in there. And uh, with that, let's get started. So we're going to start by taking off the um, handle and the assembly on the exterior parts. And you could pull the side plate first and then work on it on the bench. But this one has, an, uh, has a feature on it that uh, comes with some of the uh, ambassadors. Under the cap here, there's a uh, plastic clip that holds the spool shaft in and allows for the adjustment on it. If you don't remove the plastic clip, uh, you're going to pull the whole thing out. So I like to just kind of work over and work it a little bit backwards there. So we took the cap off and the nut, and as you notice, I put it into a convenient parts tray, which is the bottom of a milk jug. I'm also wearing a protective glove on my non-working uh, non hand there, uh, just to keep the uh, contaminants off. You're never quite sure what you're going to find when you open these reels up. and. Um, I like to protect myself as much as I can from those chemicals. Okay, we have a C-clip here. You can take the nut off, but you can't take the handle off without pulling uh, pulling that clip off. It's a spring clip. You want to be careful with the darn thing. Sometimes you can just use your hand strength like I did there uh, to loosen it. Sometimes you might need a little uh, assistance, maybe a, an, an awl or a pick or something. Just be careful with that. You lose it. It's two weeks to go get a replacement clip. Um, online. Okay, so we'll uh, take the handle off then. We're going to pull the tension washer, then we'll take the star drag adjuster off, and then we're going to get to this little assembly over here. So most of the time you do not need to pull this bearing cap, but in this particular case I find that more times than not if I don't pull this off and I don't take the the little adjuster out of there that uh, I'm stuck. This is it. Uh, notice the orientation on it. It's a plastic clip and that plastic clip rides in a channel or a groove. You probably can see it better this way but there's a little groove here and if you don't take that off then when you go to remove the side plate this spool shaft is coming or, or the axle or the spool shaft is going to come out with the side plate and you're going to have to do that eventually anyway so I like to do it right then then we have the two uh, case mounting screws they're thumb screws so all you have to do is kind of break the hold on them and then the rest of it you can remove with your fingers and I like these little reels they're great little flipper reels uh, and uh, to me it's uh, they're just a little joy to have and it's just uh, it's just coincidental that I found two of them at the same time. That's what the back of your side plate looks like. Here's your axle shaft now with your spool and if you didn't have uh, 
if we didn't take that out, uh, this would this shaft would have come out and attached itself by way of that plastic clip. I'm going to take the spool out now. This is a three ball bearing reel. One of the bearings is right here on the spool. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some reel oil. In this case, the closest at hand is a pen precision reel oil. Just going to put a drop on that bearing there. We did hear a little bit of a squeaky going on there, so let's uh, take care of that. There is no bearing on this side of the spool. There is. Uh, I believe that's the bearing over here. So this is interesting. Not interesting. On this side plate here, there's nothing going on. Uh, I'll show you nothing's going on, but there's only one screw that attaches here. And for this service, you don't need to pull this side plate unless you want to. I'm just going to hold that screw in place there just to show you that there's kind of nothing going on here. Let me back it out all the way. But it's only one piece uh, screw there. And as you can see, there's nothing going on back here. There's an attachment that holds the worm gear in place, that bearing, and there's a spring that's used to uh, guide the free spool release. But that's it. There's no tricks on this side of the reel, so you don't have to remove the side plate for a normal servicing. So with that, I, as I mentioned, I'm holding that uh, screw in place there because me and those little screws don't get along very well, and I'm just going to tighten that screw back up. Then we'll go ahead and put a drop of oil, since the other one is close at hand now. I also use Relex, which is a thin synthetic oil, and we'll just oil that piece as well. On this we have a worm gear. You saw the one side, here's the drive on the other side. I'm just going to move this so that the pawl assembly comes over to the right here. We're going to pull that pawl assembly, make sure that that pawl is okay. Again, this was purchased. I didn't own this thing from the start, so I don't know the history. It appears to be operating okay, but appearances are sometimes uh, deceptive. So we're going to pull that pawl out. We're going to check on that pawl. We want to make sure that the teeth on both sides of that pawl in the fork are good, which they appear to be. And I'm just going to grab a little bit of a paper towel here and I'm just going to clean that off. Then we're going to put some oil in that carrier. The wall. This one you may need, I do, I have good hands. You may need a um, something like this and a needle nose pliers to set that pole properly. Some of the bigger reels with more space, it's easier to be done by hand. In this case, uh, I have a little bit of trouble with them, so what the heck for the assist. I'm going to oil it so that it moves freely in that channel and we can move the pole cover back on, the cap. And in setting the pole, it's a kind of a game of hit and miss here. You got to make sure that it continues to move so that the forks are in the channel. Looks like I have it there. It seems to be working just fine. Actually it moves very freely which is nice. Alright, so that's how you service the line. And then we have a conversation every now and then with folks. Should I oil that worm gear or should I put uh, lubricant on it? My choice is oil. I think the lubricant, if you're in a uh, situation like at the, at the beach or that, uh, the sand and that and contaminants, salt water and that can uh, accumulate on the lubricant where on the uh, uh, the grease or the oil is not as much. Alright, this spool is done then. I'm going to go put that spool back in and then we'll turn our attention over to the business side of the reel there with the gears. Okay, that's all set up now. One of the things I like about this reel, when you release the free spool, the line guide doesn't move. That's because it's not spool driven and uh, that always makes a difference to me. Okay, this is the gear side now. Kind of interesting. You're used to seeing a, um, an ambassador side plate that's the full circle here. This is a partial circle. Kind of the same setup uh, as the ambassadors, but again, we'll show you what's going on underneath here. Same, but a little bit different. Again, it's a compact size, so there's a little bit of things are done differently in space. Put that back into the parts tray there. Grab the same thing over here. Okay, so now we're done. We've got the two 
screws that hold the uh, free spool assembly and the case in place. You simply need to lift up at this point to remove the case. When you do that, there's going to be two shim washers there. Make sure that you notice how those shim washers came out. Now these are tensioning washers for the uh, star adjuster nut. They can be uh, opposing, which is the way this is set up. They can be face uh, spooning, which would be this way. Oh, I'll get it. Yeah, there you go. They can be spooning, and they can be uh, concave. In insides touching, outsides bulging. They're all about the sensitivity of that uh, uh, star adjuster nut. Okay, inside the case, the only thing we have is the anti-reverse bearing. Just make sure it's clean. If it's not clean, uh, use a cotton swab or, or something. If you're using cotton swab, be careful of the little cotton fabrics in there. I just put a little bit of oil on there to keep that uh, lubricated. And now we're on to the business end of the reel then. So if you've got a reel that's been taken off uh, at this point or you're wondering what's going on, uh, we'll just take you through the thing. Here's a carrier. The carrier actually has a spring in it here that controls the... Um, the free spool release lock, so you have to be careful of that, with that when you take that off. But otherwise it just simply pulls off. I'm going to see if I can't, uh, can't grab this and just push this to the back as I pull it off. It's kind of hard with the camera and what I'm trying to do here. There we go, we got it off. So you'll notice there's a spring mounted in here. Uh, I, I think I've never had that spring shoot out on me. I'm just assuming it's kind of set in place there, molded in. But just be careful, it is a spring. So that's the carrier. And then the rest of it kind of looks just like every other ambassador of recent vintage out there. Main gear, uh, we have, we've already pulled that Eclipse, so we can pull this whole assembly off. The, uh, the ferrule or the inside run on the um, anti-reverse uh, bearing. We have the carrier for the spool gear. And we have the trip mechanism for the uh, free spool release. So let's just go ahead and pull these off then. As I mentioned, you have to take the E-clip off to get this off. Once you do, the whole assembly can come off. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. You have a little tensioning um, uh, piece here for the spool when you go to put the, the drag on. Behind that is the trip lever. Let's see if we can just pull that off for you as well. Here's your is your trip lever so we're just going to take this down to the frame just so you see what's going on here uh, we'll take the spool gear off next and then what we're left with basically is the trip mechanism the trip mechanism comes out just like that and then there's one more if you want to take it off you can now, so I would recommend that you do that if you've got a dirty uh, bridge plate and uh, needs to, to be cleaned up but uh, again from an assembly standpoint this is the orientation. This is your trip lever that's going to be flipped with the, uh, the thumb release. These are very clean. We're just going to take these and put these back in kind of the way they came. Just so you notice how it is. Remember, this is going to hook into that spring on the top side there. And grab this little basket here. I don't know what the proper name for that little basket is, but it's a little basket kind of a thing. And so you want to make sure this is running freely. We're going to use a little bit of grease here just to keep it spinning nicely. Put a little bit on the carrier, a little bit on the teeth of the spool gear. Once we do that, we'll bring that in. Remember that the spool gear with the notches in it goes through the side plate. And then we can go over to the bridge, uh, to the gear assembly here. We have a main shaft that's clean. That's why I took all of this off. That'll go sit on that basket there. Next up, I just want to check to make sure that the drags are in good condition. And this reel hardly looks used underneath. But again, for purposes of illustration, we're going to show you how these things go. And this would be your layout then. These are, these are fine. Nothing needs to be done with these drags. So, you have a drag that's going to sit in the carrier of the, the main gear. Then you have a rounded one. Make sure it's clean. If it's not clean, go ahead and use a paper towel or use some abrasives or some other things. And I'm just going to set this up right on the, uh, on the reel itself here. It's just easier. 
and we need the round one as the second one on and we have the second fabric washer then we have what's called the eared or the key washer it's got the two clips on each side of it that goes in next and sits in the recesses of the main gear and the third one of the fabric washers and the cap washer that goes on next so essentially that's the gear assembly if you needed to replace your drags uh, that's how you would go about doing it there and then we're going to go ahead and put the, the collar on that serves as the, um, the, the brake for the anti-reverse. And then the last piece then is the carrier here for the free spool. And remember we have the spring in here. That's pretty much the only thing that needs to be worked on. As you go back to put that in, you will line it up and then you just simply flip it over. To make sure that it's mounted properly. And you bring that whole piece back in. And with the exception of that little gear sleeve falling off there. This is the way that the, uh, the reel will work. Okay, so we're set up on that then. With that, then we can just simply go back and put the, the cover on. You want to line the two holes in the cover up with the, the free spool release sections that we saw there. I'm going to grab the two small screws. And we're basically just working backwards now. We're, we've put the oils on where we needed to put the oils on. Now we're just uh, tightening it up. If we needed to service the drags, we would have just replaced the drags as we had the main gear apart. And if we needed to clean the reel, you saw me take that down to the bridge so that every individual piece and part was accounted for there. But in this case, this was a very clean reel. I got lucky here on that purchase. And uh, now we're going to go put those two spool tensioning washers in. Remember that they were opposite of each other. And that's really about personal feel. It, they can go all three ways and there's no one advantage to it over the other. It's just a matter of what feels best uh, for you. Okay, before I get too much further, I like to put this on with the bearing cap only because I want to make certain that the um, I'm not tripping over the star adjuster or anything as I go do that. Line the, the back end up. There goes a clip again. Line the back up with a hole in it. That makes it easy to to mesh in. Should make it easy to mesh in. There we go. I just heard the snap on the case. And just get started with this. Uh, the two side plate screws. Okay, those two little adjuster washers just fell out when I took the reel, so note to self, hold on on that. Okay, here's that little snap thing again. Again, we have a little indentation in the axle shaft there, so find that. And then just snap this on. Sometimes we need to press it down with a screwdriver is something you'll hear the click like you just heard there and then there's a, a metal washer that goes underneath the cap and the cap itself and you usually have to press down on the cap a little bit because there's a, um, a rubber O washer in there and then I just turn it to make sure that works and it does so now we can go ahead with the rest of this we can put the star adjuster on Turn it, make sure you're turning, you don't have to get much further. This is turning, and I'm not hearing that whine any longer, so that oil worked well. Make sure that the free spool release works. Push it down, turn the spool, make sure it trips back. Yep, there we go, we're good with that. Next up then is the tension washer. Now if you didn't know the sequence to this, if you got lost and out of control, if, if you uh, have a box of parts there and you're trying to figure out where they all go, this reel and then the others, go out and get the schematic for the reel. The schematics are available at uh, abugarcia.com under support or under parts or under something like that. I've used it a hundred times. I can't tell you verbatim what it's under, but they're there. If you do an internet search and say Abu uh, Ambassador Schematic or something like that, you should get it that way as well. Okay, and then we can put this E-clip back on. You've got to put the E-clip on before the uh, 
the nut. That's the, that wasn't an absolute necessity. Again, you can use your hand strength or you can use the pliers like this one. I will use the pliers here. To push that E-clip on. And again, that clip can shoot, so to the best of your ability, kind of try and hold it as you do it. And then you're on with that. Then you can continue to tighten this down. The only thing left here is the, the handle nut cap and a test drive. So let's see how we did. I think we did okay. Alright, there we go. So we have the reel. And as you can tell, there's no squeak, squeal, or squabble about this one at all. Make sure that the drags get tightened down and are holding. They are. And again, what I like about this one, from a casting perspective, is when you engage the free spool and you trip, trip the spool here, that line guide is not moving, so it's not taking tension off of the, or not putting increased drag on the cast, it doesn't move. And as soon as you click it back, it is because it's right side driven. There's a couple of them out there. The, the ambassadors are one of them, uh, this one. Uh, there's some uh, Shimano's and the like that, uh, that have that same feature, and I'm, I'm a big fan of that. So that's it. That's the Black Max 3600C. It's uh, a nice reel, for, as I mentioned, for rivers, lakes, inshore, ocean, fun with a light rod, light tackle, game fishing. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, please like it and subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, I wish you the best of fishing. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for viewing.